With the squad, mess with one of us, you ain't messing with my vision, messing with the money, you ain't messing with this with the squad. What's up guys? Welcome to NFD TV, No More to Feast TV. What we do is win, never taking any losses, and shout out to all my bosses, guys. And today, of course, is Miami Mondays. Every Monday, your boy's here at 9 p.m. Eastern. Not only that, most of the time, I will have a co-host. With today, you know, everybody's recapping the Paradise Camp and what happened this past weekend. Today, I'm bringing Anthony the Insider. He was actually at the um, Paradise Camp. I wasn't at the Paradise Camp. Anthony was there. So he's going to tell you what he saw with his own eyes. Um, also, I've put out two interviews with a, uh, with Anthony and with um, with um, Matthew from Kane's Insight talking about it. So we got it all covered, but I want to know what you guys thought about it. Uh, first, let's um, give a shout out to the people who's here at 9 o'clock sharp. You know, Daniel, what's up, my guy? Curtis Matthews. Joseph Home, Vernon Speaks Sports, what's up? Um, hey, maybe we'll have Vernon on th this past week. David Settles, um, David, my guy. Uh, David S., I don't know how to say David Scofer, I think. You know, you've been supporting me for a while. P.W. Ritter P., Jonathan Flagg, what's up? And I got to give a special shout out to my Patreon squad as well. David Settles. Kurt Van Horn, T. Davis, who is a new member to the Patreon squad. Thank you, guys. Michelle Allen, 
JT Sports. Shout out to the Patreon squad, guys. If you want to sign up, shop for, shop for. Did I say that right, David? Shop for. Yeah, yeah. David Settles and David Shopper both have been uh, supporting NMD TV since I had zero subscribers. Now we're at three thousand subscribers. So um, thank you guys. And we got the first super chat in for the night, man. Vernon Speaks Sports. Vernon Speak Sports with the first super chat. Appreciate that, brother, so much. George Sutton, uh, Willis, man, what's up, guys? What's up, guys? Um, yeah, we're gonna have Anthony. We're gonna talk about it. A lot to talk about today, guys. I mean, we got um, Asa Martin enters the transfer portal. We got um, we got um, Kayshawn Lawrence. Deciding to commit to Tennessee. And we got another 499 donation from my boy David Shopfer. You know, I got the name right. Yeah, man. Appreciate those super chats, man. Appreciate them. Um, yeah, so Asa Martin. In the super chat, um, Isaiah Walker, the word has come out that he's 100% South Carolina. Um, who else? Who else? What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Asa Martin has entered the transfer portal. There was one more in a paradise camp. Hey, man. Guys, you got you guys. I appreciate it, man. I, 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 man, I, I got. <laughs> David settles. I really appreciate this. Our twenty-five dollar donation. He's also a Patreon member. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, man. I, yeah, I love that clip. That's my new donation clip, man. Um, uh, guys, thank you for those super chats. I mean, uh, first of all, it's just amazing to have a platform to talk about college football, to talk about my hurricanes because I love them so much. But it's just amazing to have people uh, like you guys that uh, back me up, that backs me up, and that supports the channel. Like I said, I want to get to the point where I where I can put out content 24-7. So, so I'm okay. Uh hold on one second, guys. Listen, my I gotta let y'all in on the secret. My my girlfriend, she's out of town, so I'm having to control the dogs. So I gotta get the dogs. Jax! Jax! No, sir. Jax! See what I'm saying, man? They wilding out. Uh, give me a... Uh... But um, there was one more thing. Keyshawn Lawrence decides to go to Tennessee. Um, Keyshawn Lawrence to Tennessee. Isaiah Walker said he's 100% South Carolina is looking like. Um, and we all, we also had a, a uh, bro, bro, the dogs, they wait, they, they wait till I get on live stream and uh, they start walling out. I, so, guys, we're not going to get every recruit, but I think what the reason that the Lawrence thing I didn't like, what I didn't like about the Lawrence Keisha, uh, Keshawn Lawrence, um, you know, he's the, he's the cousin of corn elder. What I didn't like him. What I didn't like about it is. Hold on.
Golly! Golly! Man, I'm over here trying to drop this knowledge and the dog's walling out. Okay. Um, so what I was saying was the thing I didn't like about the um, the Lawrence commit was he was just at Paradise Camp. You know the the Paradise Camp was great. It was go. It, it was from what I, I from everything I heard, the Paradise Camp was amazing. And the next day he commits to he decides to commit to Tennessee, and then he kind of like picks us as the team to troll. I just thought I really wasn't a fan of that, but of course I wouldn't. But yeah, so let's see. We got uh, Hardwired to self destruction. Calvin 808 Kane. Um, yeah, we're talking about Paradise Camp. Um, who looked good? Who looked um you know who looked amazing? Um different things of that nature. Um Anthony the Insider will be calling in. He was at the Paradise Camp, so He's gonna uh we're gonna we're gonna talk about some things. We're gonna take you guys' questions. Any questions um you have, let me know. Yeah, yeah. Willis says, I understand we wasn't able to get Lawrence, but we just have to turn the page, move on. I, I agree. I agree. It happened. It's time to look at other guys. It's time to look at other candidates. And I and I look at it like this, guys. It's better a kid decommit to decom or commit to somebody in June, and he's not flip flopping us, rather than um, rather than him wait till we recruit him all the way up to the hat ceremony and he doesn't pick us. I'd rather know now. Yeah, David, we're gonna talk about it. The Feely effect. I still got to see. I still got to see the picture of uh of Nesta if if, if that's true. I got I got to see that. But um all the guys have been working hard. I mean, you can just look at um you just look at how their physiques have changed since being with Feely. I mean, they've been putting in work and it's starting to show, man, and and I, I, I'm interested to see how it plays out on the field, how we look on the field. Came for Life says, we have Francois, his teammate, Washington, Kentrell Hall, Bolden. Where is he going to play? Well, the thing about it's it's not about we need to get a player in for next year. It's about building the foundation and getting as much talent as we can. Uh, like I said, with well, Asa Martin, I'm not mad that we lost Asa Martin. I don't think us losing Asa Martin is going to make us fall back, but I never want to lose talented players because we need the depth. We need the depth. That's, that's 100%. We got 50 people in the live chat, man. 50 people. Guys, do me a real quick favor. Before Anthony's, Anthony is about to call in, go ahead and hit that like for me. Go ahead and hit that like for me. Uh, somebody asked Tennyson, what are, what, what are our chances? I, I don't think we're getting Tennyson. And, that's just, and things could change. A lot can change. We start winning games. We blow out Florida. Oh, things are looking different. Asa Martin entered the transfer portal. He is not officially transferred. I hate to say it, guy. I, I hate to say it, guys. I, I mean, I don't want to sound negative. I do not want to sound it, but we gotta we gotta win these games. But as of right now, as of right now, I don't see us getting the big time players. I don't see us getting Justin Flo or uh, Darnell Washington. I don't see it. NFD TV, what's up? What's going on? What's going on? 
My guy, Anthony the Insider. How we living? How we feeling? Everything good. Everything good. Good, good, good. We got we got fifty two people in the live chat right now. I told them you had the inside info. Uh, you know, I wanted to talk to you about um, Paradise Camp and all that. But before that, I wanted to talk to you about something else. All right. So we had a Florida Gator um, running back, and and he tweeted out. Did you see his tweet? No, I didn't see it. Okay, the tweet said. I've been watching, I'm paraphrasing here, but um, he said, I've been watching film on these, uh, on these Miami boys and boy, it's going to get ugly fast. Now, now, now this is the, this is the, what, the second time that they, that they have, they have been on wax of talking mess to us. How you feel about that, Anthony? How you feel about that? They just taking the identity of the head coach. That's all they're doing. They're taking the identity of the head coach. He really got them believing that they what they think they are. Um, I would just do what Nessa said. You know, August twenty fourth. That would be the only talking. But um, you know, I'm gonna be real with you. Like, I don't know what tape he watched because this whole this is, this is a, a different a different defense. A, a, a different defense. So. Thank you. I don't know what tape he saw. Thank you. you know, he's still in the, he's still looking at seven seven and six. Um, and even then I think that defense uh last season was still formidable, so um, you know, they just trying to stir something up, man. But one thing about that is you put a target on your back. So whoever he whoever he is, you know, let's just hope the right people ain't hear what he's saying. But well, I, more than likely they do and um he'll have a target on his back. Well, I think I can, let's see here. Let's see if I can, if I, I thought I, I thought I was, well, his total stats were he had uh, four attempts for 17 total yards last season. Wow. <laughs> right. So basically, both our freshmen last year had more yards than him. <laughs> Bro, we almost had more yards than them, and we didn't even touch the field. Um, right. So, uh, so on to the business. Um, uh, Paradise Camp, uh, you was there. Um, just, just give us the the instant reaction. I know we talked about this a little bit, but for the people who didn't see it, uh, just give me the instant reaction. Um, my instant reaction being that was my first Paradise Camp. It was a real. Uh, a really nice turnout. It was well organized. Um, I think that was Manny kind of putting his stamp on the whole new Miami vibe. Every everything he was saying and everything all the um, special guests and former players were saying was all the same thing. Um, if you want to be great, you're in the right place. You got to work. It ain't gonna be handed to you. Um, we don't want it, it. Your stars don't really matter at the end of the day because you know. You can always be replaced. It was pretty straightforward and direct. I think the parents liked that. They appreciated that. Um, the organization was real cool. We we did a inside outside um, session. So half of the guys were outside, half the guys were inside. That was something different, obviously, because we got the indoor facility now. So it was it was a real good turnout. You know, near the end. They put all the top prospects against each other, and you know, mano a mano had a nice little forty-yard race with all of the classes. So he was just doing something a little bit different, a little bit different. Okay, okay, and and um, I guess how how did like how did you feel being there? You know, could you like feel like the excitement in the air? Could you feel just everybody's wanting to compete, or you know? Well, I'm a, I, what I liked about it was the former players all the way up to, like, the Alonzo Highsmith, the Geno Toretta's, like, all of them was really all in. It wasn't, they wasn't there just the first for show. They was just excited as the kids, coaching them. They was, like, literally right, right there with them, you know, giving them tips, telling them what worked for them, 
Jeremy Shockey was with all the tight ends, telling them what worked for him, along with Njoku and Hernan. Um, everybody was pitching in, and the kids, you could tell the kids was kind of like, almost like shocked. You can, you can kind of get a vibe. They was like, man, this is like memory overload because, you know, you got nothing but current NFL players, former NFL players, former Kings players, you know, and stuff like that. So it was a good vibe. The vibe was real good. You know, you can feel it. Right. You know, even right. the parents, just walking by hearing the parents talking, you know. So it was a good, it was a good, a good feel. Okay. Okay. So, so tell me about our guy. You know, I want to, I want to talk about, Several different guys, and um, I'm sure by now a lot of people have heard about it. this one guy because it was all over the internet. But let, let's talk about Tyler Van Dyke, um, four star quarterback. He's going to be in the Elite 11, uh, committing this 2020 class, the leader of this 2020 class. I feel like him and Don Chaney. What would you think? You know, this is your first time seeing him play. What do you think? Uh, my first time, my literal first time locking my eyes on him, he was warming up with Don Chaney. So that's ironic that you mentioned both of them together. They got a chemistry going already, and they was basically chatting it up with the other guys and warming up together. And then um, he's a big dude, big kid, huge, um, tall, strong. He got a good long arm, um, strong arm. He could throw it anywhere. And he got a presence to him. You can tell he's still a kid. He like to have fun, but he got he got a presence to him. And I think um, all the other quarterbacks in the group was kind of you know gravitating towards him. You know, um, I, I think everybody knew who he was that day. Okay, okay, and that's something that we really haven't had the last couple years. And and uh, you know, we're gonna talk about. Uh, this next guy that I want to that I want to bring up, but it's good to have an ambassador there to say, hey, um, you know, if you if you join this class, I'm gonna I'm gonna be throwing you the ball, and then he goes out um, and throwing uh, like an amazing quarterback. I mean, I think that helps us out a lot. Uh, he was throwing to Darnell Washington. What would you think, man? Um, they connected on a lot of passes. Um, you know, it was kind of like that sandline thing, you know, um, one of the receivers, I think it was Sutter, Sutterfield, you know, he'd give a guy a route, you know, he, he, you know and, and let the quarterback and the guy work it out. And uh, he connected, man. One thing I liked about it was Van Dyke, he, he had not only um, Darnell Washington, but he also had uh, Restrepo at wide out on, mm-hmm. on a lot of uh, plays, and he had uh, Don Taney, um at running back. So he... He kind of stepped up and, and pretty much took took to the challenge to say, I want to work with these guys. I want to get reps in with these guys. And that's something you don't really see coming out of, you know, really with a high schooler coming out of high school as a quarterback saying, uh, I know I'm here, you know, for a camp, but I want to I want to get reps with these guys. And I want to throw against top prospects as well, throw against a lot of good DBs and safety. So it was exciting. Um, a lot of connections, especially with Darnell Washington. He a big target, man. I don't see nobody. I don't see no nobody matching up with him at all. Like literally, if I, I don't know what his vertical is, uh, we really didn't have to see his vertical because his his catch radius is so crazy. His arms are long, got big hands, uh, and Van Dyke was putting it, you know, in different places, you know, so. Um, it was it was exciting, really exciting to see. And if that's our future, uh, we 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 looking good. And so, did you see any DBs get the best of Washington? Uh, no, not really. Um, once the ball got in its catch radius, it was kind of hard um, to really. It was really hard to to compete with him because you know he he can reach back and get it. He can reach up and get it. He can reach out front and get it. And um, a lot of the DBs and safeties, you know, uh, they would play the ball as they should. But, you know, it, the way Van Dyke, you know, was putting it, he was putting it like he was literally throwing it, not in a spot. He was throwing it to Washington. So, like, basically throwing it to him only where he can get it. So, 
know, it was kind of like people way. Um, it, it's 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 crazy for that dude to just be in high school right now. Um, yeah, he both both of them because they so big. Right. right. Right, and, and, let, and let's talk about our boy Restrepo, who I I finally got to see some clips of him. So, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and we got to realize this is just 7-on-7. Seven seven. It's just 7-on-7. Seven seven. But what what I liked is how we, we keep using this word, he wanted to compete. How, you know, yeah. he, you know he's jawing with the players, you know, respectfully. But still um, has that fire in him, man. What what do you think about Restrepo? What I like about him, he got a chip on his shoulder. You know, um, I can tell just by how he carries himself. You know, and obviously, you know, I don't know how many schools you know he had offers from, but the way he plays, he, he's a ball hawk. He, he knows how to get to the ball. He knows how to get open. He got deceptive quickness. Like you, you, his route running is so crisp. He's got deceptive quickness because he looks smooth doing it. He don't look choppy. So you know he he got a nice a nice wiggle. You know that's the with, with when he coming out of his route. Um, I know I kind of liken him to Barrios a little bit, but his frame, you know, he's got an odd frame, man. He got a real compact, strong frame, big legs. He ain't like a smaller, he's not a small guy. You know, he is short. I would say, I want to say five nine, maybe five ten top. But he 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 looked like he looked like he would give somebody a run for their money, maybe a nickel, a nickel back or something like that. He would give them a run for their money. So, so you I, I so like you like you sold on Restrepo, one hundred. Oh yeah, with the eye test. With the eye test. Now, obviously, that's not passed. You know how you know how these seven on sevens are. Um, you get a guy. You know they they good without pass, but when the pass come on, it's another story. But uh, from watching this film and watching him in person and watching him against better, you know the some of the top um, prospects in his class, um, I'm sold on him right now. Okay. Okay. Um, and that's what a lot of people have been saying, man. A lot of people saying we gotta we gotta get off these we gotta stop talking bad about a player just because he's a three star, you know, because all three stars aren't created equal. Cause I promise you a three star and um coming out of Florida is on a whole nother letter le uh level than a three star coming out of, you know, North Dakota or somewhere, you know? And the one thing I heard you say before I called in, you was talking about it's a good problem to have to have as many talented players as possible because all that's going to do is free competition. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, you know, when we used to watch all those U and the U Reloaded, all the documentaries, they all said the same thing. Everybody competed and everybody was talented. You know, you got guys having Sean Taylor sitting on the bench. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. You know, I mean, as talented as Sean Teller was, you know, it was guys out there saying, no, not yet. Not, you know, so everybody was competing with everybody. So, um, I, and Manny said something before they started, you know, getting the ball going, getting the kids out there with the ball. He said, um, I don't care what star you are. You know, I, I just want to know who here to compete I don't care what 40 times you run. We're not running 40. We're not measuring your height. We're not measuring your weight. We're not taking me measurements. We're not watching your film. We're not doing none of that. We're just trying to see who's going to here to compete. And that's who we look for for my hurricane. So that's um, what you were talking about. Make this. And, you know, the fact that Restrepo is a three-star, I mean, hey, I think he got a place on the, on the field because – the way he wired, you know, that I, I I think he fits as far as you know the swag. Right, right, and, and let me and let me kind of you know I still want to talk a little bit more about the Paradise Camp, but I don't think we're ever going to get to those situations like you said. We had Sean Taylor sitting on the bench. We had great players sitting on the bench. You know, we have Frank Gore not seeing the field. 
uh, you know, you know, because of injuries and things like that. But we had players waiting their time. I don't think that's going to happen anymore because of the transfer portal. I agree. Um, but the thing is, it's still a good problem to have to have as many talented players as possible. So I agree. you can see who's willing to stay and fight and who's willing to duck and run. So it's still a good problem to have because I look at it like this. If I got three guys and I got a three-star, four-star, and a five-star, and my three-star don't transfer, but my five-star want to leave, I ain't worried about it. Let him go because that means he don't want to fight for his, for his position. You know what I'm saying? Real right. talk. Like, you got guys that, that feel like everything is tied to them because of that star, and that's what Manny was talking about. So I think a lot of guys don't transfer. It may backfire on them. But, you know, if you want to be, you know, the best you can be and see the field, stay in fight and see right. what happens. Right. And a lot of time, I mean, this I mean, this saying has been around forever, and it's because it's true. The, the grass ain't always greener. You know, transferring isn't always the answer. You know, but, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Um, did you get to see Elijah Roberts uh, much during camp? Yeah, I saw him. Um, he was there. His family was there. Um, he looked good, you know. Yeah, his, mo- his mom was on Twitter more than me. Yeah. He, he, yeah. he seems that's like a big family a guy. Family. Yeah, that's a, that's a proud family there. Okay. So he going to do, I think he going to. Thing. Well, you know, and the reason I think that's important is because, you know, it's one thing for a, a, a athlete to, um, you know, kind of put themselves out there. But I feel like it's kind of different when you put your whole family into it. it to me, it kind of feels like makes me think your commitment is going to stick even more. I agree um, because, you know, obviously – that's a, a big sell for a coach as well. Like, if it looks like, you know, the coach got the, the family out there and they having fun, a lot of times, you know, that means that maybe that coach has a, 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 a good a good rapport with that family. You know, and obviously being a local kid, you know, you know, I'm sure either they were fans of the program or he was a fan of the program, who knows. So that might be just him living his dream and his his family being happy for him, or something like that. You know, that's that's what I would take from it because you know he's a local kid and I think uh, you know you can tell by his his family there and some proud people. Good, good, yeah. His mom was all on Twitter, but and you know I'm a huge mama's boy, and if it was me, you know I love. <laughs> I love to have my mom there too, wearing the turnover chain and everything. And, and, and that's what I really liked. And that's when I was like, man, I think this guy really is going to stick Um uh, huge commit to me can play um, inside or out. Um, the, everybody has a rated as three stars, but um, the guys I've talked to said he's going to get bumped up to a four star, which is going to help out the overall rankings for the class. Um, <laughs> Now, I, I, now again, like I said, I do want to keep talking about Paradise uh, Camp, but I want to I want to talk to you some. In one of my live streams, you said, uh, you know, we have. We're, I was talking about freshmen. I was saying we don't want to rely too much on freshmen, and the reason being is because I don't. A, a lot of people they get overhype about about players. You know, they say they think just because a guy killed it in high school, he's gonna be able to come right into college and do the same thing, but there's a lot more in the play, a lot more schooling, a lot more reading the playbook, a lot better players. But you kind of went back on uh, at me at that and said, well, we had three linebackers who did it. You know, I want you to kind of discuss that. Well, uh, it depends. Like, position dictates that, that thing right there, what we're talking about. Okay. You know, um, linebacker, Basically, linebackers, any linebacker packages, whether it's 3-4 or 4-3, are basically the same. Seek and destroy or play zone. You know what I'm saying? Um, Responsibilities are usually the same coming up through high school and little league and college. The only thing would be maybe uh, there's certain disguises, certain language, things like that. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and certain, maybe certain blitz packages, things like that. But outside of that, what I meant was 
the linebacker position because that's where we actually got a little worried in the spring because, you know, we lost two, you know, up and comers and we got seniors here and we're just a, a couple injuries away from being in a little bit of trouble, which is true. Um, but I do think that would be the position where I would probably be the least worried because if as long as we know we got found guys that are coming in, um, usually um, freshmen are able to catch on a lot quicker. You know what I'm saying? Right. At that position. Okay, now, okay. Now, and, and, and specialty players, it might be a little different because responsibilities might be different, different schemes and stuff. Okay, okay. And um and I and I agree with that. I get what you're saying on that. So what about the defensive side? Um at the at the Paradise Camp, did you see some defensive players that you like? I know they had James Williams there. Uh like I said, Kayshawn Lawrence was there, Tim Burns was there. Did you see any players that really stood out to you or that you want to recognize? Um, Kayshawn Lawrence, um it was it was really it, it was a few guys that stood out. There's this one kid, man, blazing speed. I forgot his name. He won the forty yard uh race. Oh my god, he had a five on his back. I think um he's from uh northern Florida area, northern or central Florida mm-hmm. area. And uh that guy, man, he he's a ball hawk. You know, it's a, it was a few ball hawks out there. Um, it was a few agile linebackers, and I won't know their names, um, unfortunately, because um, usually it's so many people out there, and, and they don't get their names on their uh, gear. Right. Uh, so it was kind of tough to kind of pick out everybody, unless it's somebody who you know we 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 already had on the radar. But um, it was a lot of it was a lot of promising guys out there, and I think Blake Baker was fired up about it. Um, Mike Rump was fired up about it. We had some feisty DBs and safety, uh, some feisty linebackers, some good D linemen too. Um, the kid who, uh, the kid who, what's his last name? Washington. The kid who uh, committed the O lineman. Oh, Chris Washington. Chris Washington. Yeah, he had some battles, man. He had some battles with some really good D linemen. And um, I think, uh, I don't know the D-Lyman's name, uh, you know, y'all got to forgive me for that. But um, there, you, you start seeing a lot of a lot of good things. Usually when these kids are in, in and out of their drills, you, you can't really walk up to them. You got to kind of wait until the session is over. So I wasn't able to catch all the kids and, you know, get at them, talk to them. I did talk to a few players, but I didn't get to really get at everybody I needed to, to kind of get their name, you know, See what's going on with them. Okay. Uh, the what do you think about the Chris Washington kid? Uh, kid out of Overton, uh, Tennessee, committed over the weekend. Huge guy. I know it's body in his frame. What do you think about him? We saw him as soon as we walked in. We saw. I'll tell you. Basically, this is how it works. You walk in and you just see you see a lot of players and you see guys looking down at a lot of players. He's he's a big, huge, look like a big country boy, big guy. Um, he's got a nice athletic frame. He doesn't have a um, you know he ain't a fat boy. He's got an athletic frame. Um, he did, he actually ran in the uh, forty yard uh, race and he was doing pretty good actually. Um, you know you can still you can still see that he has a lot of growing to do in his body, but that's a good problem to have because. He's still humongous, and he just got an athletic frame. So um, whether it's tackle or guard, I think it's tackle because of his size, obviously his height. Um, I think he's going to be an asset. Um, I don't, I don't know. Um, he's he's got technique. Okay. Okay. The dog, the dog, uh, that yet to be seen, but the technique is there, and I think that's what. Um, you know, Coach Barry wanted to see, and you know, I think I think we got a good one. Now the dog, I really, I'm just waiting to see us get some of those, some of those doggo linemen, some some maulers, you know. So right. hopefully he's got that in him, and we'll see if he sticks to his commitment and sign on the dotted line. You know, we'll we'll, we'll see. 
Well, and I mean, we look at um, Chris Washington, and we look at Jalen Rivers. I mean, we're getting some, we're getting some talent in there, but I feel like we've all we've always had talent. We've been able to recruit offensive linemen, but have we been able to develop them? Is the question. Uh, that's exactly that's that's a great point. Um, that is exactly the problem we had in the last couple seasons because. We had such a vanilla offense, and basically they were catered for the run. We didn't really have a, 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 a basically, um, you know, a um, versatile um, developed offense. Because you can see, you can literally see those guys um, in the pass rush just not not very developed. I mean, uh, uh, Scaife, he he was a he's a he's a big kid. And um, huge, but you can kind of see him reaching a lot, you know, off balance. You know, even though he was out of position last year, um, I think you know those guys wasn't really getting uh, a fair shake. Um, now he's back a year later, and you know we got Devon Donaldson, who showed in the spring that you know he's actually probably the most developed old lineman we have as far as you know rush block, pass block, pulling, and, 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 and playing multiple positions, which is important. So um, if we can keep that momentum going from the spring, because I did see strides being made in the spring, and that's a good sign. Okay. So if we can keep that momentum going with these future um, prospects and, and, and our current guys, um, and, and, and let's, let's, let's keep it real. Even with the struggles we had at O-line and the play calling, we were still in a lot of games. Hey, stop, boy, boy, so, boy! That's so, what that's what people don't talk about. Even that's, with the poor, that, even that's what, with the poor quarterback play here and there, we were still in a lot of games, bro. That's what we're people don't talk about. That's what people. That's what people don't talk about. Is as hey, as as, as like we had the worst O line in the country, which it was. I think the play calling dictated our O line play. Because of the fact that we were so vanilla, we played against a loaded box week in and week out. And we were still in games just off of pure talent. You know, so I do believe that with uh, this type of development. I believe um, we're, we're gonna we're gonna be strived better offensively than we were last year. Even with the new OC, even with the new playbook, uh, with that vanilla playbook, you know, look what Jeff Thomas was still able to do. You know, with the lame duck um, with lame duck passes, and look what um, Lorenzo Lingard showed flashes doing. Look what Cam Davis, aka Harris, showed flashes. Look at Brevin before he got hurt. Look at Mallory before he got hurt. We were still in games. We were still in these games with that vanilla offense and that underdeveloped O-line and injured O-line. So let's not get it twisted, Mr. Running Back at Florida, whatever tape you was watching in seven, about the 7-6 and six hurricane, mm-hmm. because this new Miami, bro, and, and, and not to mention, we talked about this, we got a five-quarter football team coming. Right, right. And let's and let we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to that, but I wanna talk to you about something that that we kinda were just talking about and um first of all I wanna say, remember this guys, development over stars. I wanna get a t shirt made. Development over stars. You gotta have the right coaches to develop the players. So I'm asking you, how were how was our coaching staff at this camp? How were they interacting, and what? And how did you feel watching our coaches? Um, I, I felt uh, really exuberated. Um, now I did get to go to some of Mark, Mark Rick's practices. I didn't get to go to the Paradise Camp. I know they have to put on the show a lot of times because they're parents. You know, it's a lot of kids. Maybe they, maybe they. I don't know because I wasn't there the last couple of years for Mark Rick. But I did go to some of those practices and just the uh, energy level were very nonchalant, very laid back, very okay. this 
even at Paradise Camp, I already been there for the spring, so I already we already talked about the energy level. Right, with, right. With, I want to know about what the at Paradise uh, Camp in front of the parents, camp. in front of and coaching the players. How were how were they? Exactly. But Paradise Camp, it was it was turned up because those are our kids, but these coaches were treating them like they were our kids, and literally. It was almost a mirror, like Blake Baker. I talked about it, you know, uh, when I talked to you the last time. Blake Baker is a man. He's a he's he's a five hour energy drink. Right, you know right. I mean? And he's vocal. He's direct. He's stern. When when you do good, oh, he gonna give you the attaboys. He gonna get loud. He gonna get he gonna he gonna jump with you. When you mess up, he gonna correct you quickly. And if you repeat that, that mess up, he's going to go ahead and give you, he, you know, let you know, hey, man, that ain't going to work here. That ain't going to work, you know. So it's about correcting and correcting quickly and moving forward. And it's about not making the same mistakes in all of the coaches. A lot of times they kind of let a lot of the um, the former players, the NFL players and um, current current players chime in because each position we had deep guys. We had Zach McLeod coaching. Uh, we had Shaq coaching. We had Pickney coaching. Rohan Marley coaching. Blake Baker, Patsy, all of those were coaching the linebackers. That's a that's a memory overload, just, just that. You know what I'm saying? Then we had um, Jeremy Shockey coaching tight end. Coach Fields. We had um, Hernan. We had Njoku. And we had Brevin Jordan out there coaching all the tight ends. So everything was deep, man. We had um, Treyon Gray, um, DJ Dallas, Travis Homer, um, Lorenzo Lingard. All those guys were coaching the the, uh, the running back. So if you if you think if you get what I'm going, they were coaching, and the coaches were coaching. So it, it was it was it was really you would have to you wouldn't be serious about your future if you didn't show up to that camp. Okay. And those guys were keeping it one hundred with it. He was like, Hey bro, you're gonna you're gonna lose every time. I think that was um DJ, DJ Dallas. He was talking to one guy, he was like, Bro, you're gonna lose every time if you you know, if you stab here and, and, and uh, you know, you know, don't spin, don't spin. Like like those guys were correcting these young guys that all the things they were getting away with in Little League and high school and letting them know, uh-uh, that ain't going to work here. So it was really productive, really productive. Let me ask you about one coach in particular. Mm-hmm. Because this coach, people, people have been praising every coach in this, on the staff, except for one coach, and that's Coach Stubblefield, the wide receivers coach. What what what's your opinion on him? And and you gotta back it up. I wanna I wanna know I wanna know why you feel what you feel. Let let it be known. I'm gonna give it to you real and give it to you raw. Ah, oh. Coach Doublefield might be if we had a question mark. Oh my goodness, what's up? He's very he's very pro, he's very vocal. He's very professional. But he might be a little too professional. You know what I mean? Almost as if there isn't a connection there. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to kind of speak those kids' language a little bit and let them know that, hey, I know what you're – you know what I'm saying? I, I feel you, but I need you to feel me right now. Um, he, 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 and and this, is not, this is not a bad thing yet. Okay. I don't know what relationship those guys have with him. But I do know that he is a part, you know, when it comes to recruiting, he is around. So, um, you know, obviously he's a new face for a lot of the guys we already had here. So it's yet to be seen how, how they react. But he's very, um, very detail-oriented. He, he kind of gets in and out of drills quickly, um, just getting guys reps. I would say... He's more like a um, assistant, you know what I'm saying, than a wide receivers coach. 
Okay. 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 I don't get that. I don't get that vibe from him. Like I play wide receiver, and I'm finna, I'm finna school y'all, young bucks, and let y'all get y'all the game, and this and that. He's more like technique technician. Uh uh-uh. uh. Touch the ball. Touch the ball. All right. Give me ten push up. Touch the ball. He's very very, and I think we need that as well. We need discipline, especially at the wide receiver position. You know what I'm saying? Any 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 position where guys got the ball in their hands, you need that discipline. If you don't touch that ball, you got to drop and give me 10. We got to catch it first. We got to catch you don't it, you got to drop and give me 10. If you turn it over, you got to – if you don't put it in the outside arm, you got to drop it. Now, I get that. Muscle memory. You got to keep those guys disciplined. But at the same time, the fire that I get from a lot of the other coaches – I don't get that type of fire from him. Now, it may work because, you know, I'm going to be real. A lot of receivers are divas. A lot of receivers become emotional. Right. You're right. You're so, right. So he, he, ain't a, he ain't one of those yellers and screamers and, and you know, get on, get, get on, breathe down your net. That may be a good thing. Who knows? So, so you know, but I think he just doesn't give me that feeling Um. Um, like, I mean, I'm going to be real. Coach, Dug- coach Dugans wasn't the most vocal receiver coach either. You know what I'm saying? So I- I'm not going to say because he ain't as fiery, he's less of a coach. Anthony, what um, if I told you tomorrow, what if tomorrow it was breaking news, Doublefield is out as the wide receiver coach, Coach Cooney is the new wide receiver coach. How would you feel? How would you feel? First of all, I want to give a shout out to my boy Mark for the donation. Thank you so much, Mark. We gotta hit him with the. We gotta hit him with the. With okay, okay. How, how would you? How would you feel about that? I'm not gonna take credit for that question. That was a question by D Rev Lee. Mark, thank you again for that donation, man. It means a lot. It really does. Anthony, what would you yeah. say? And, 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 and just just a rebuttal that r- r- real quick. Jay Jay the U Family Blaze says we need to keep Cooney recruiting. He doing good at recruiting. Right. What What do you think? What do you think? Um, I wouldn't be mad if both of them coach the guy because I do see I do see I don't see a liability with coach. Um, I mean, he has his he has his benefit for what he does coach these guys on. But Coach Cooney, I think he might connect with the guys a little more. Right. He might have a better connection with the guys, and I think that's important because you don't want it to be like just being. You don't want as a coach to just come off as a manager. You know what I'm saying? Uh, coach Stubblefield comes off as a manager at your job. You feel me? Yeah you're you're, yeah, you're 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 going to be held accountable to this. No excuses. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Coach Cooney, I believe, got a connection with the guy. You know, and I think he might have a, a more, um, like I say, a more of a connection with the guy. So if that did happen, I think maybe you can bump down uh, Stubblefield to assistant wide receiver coach, and and you know let Cooney. Uh, do his thing, his thug dizzle. So that way, at the end of the day, they answer the Cooney. So um, I don't see that being a problem, but that's a good question. And I'm the, I, that's a real good question, actually. That's that boy D Rev Lee, always, always in the chat, doing good, sharing the videos. I appreciate that, D Rev Lee. Um, okay, yeah. And, and I've just been hearing Coach Stubblefield getting a lot of slack. My thing is, Let's give the guy time. Let's let's build the resume. Either it's going to be a good resume or a bad resume. We can't just start him off. He's only been in a couple months. So so let's give the guy um some time here. Um the so you, you were talking about um what what tell the people your new saying uh, for Coach Feely in the football team. What, what's your new saying? Hey, time always flies when Feely's on the clock. 
My only reason I say that is because, oh, what a spring has, has shown Well, I'm us. saying, I'm saying, what type of team are we, though? Oh, we a five-quarter football team now, baby. Five quarters. To make a shirt out of that. And, and why? Five and quarters. why? And why do you say that? Because I'm going to tell you something, man. I can't wait for all our Kings fans to see this team that gets rolled out onto the field. These guys look like action figures, and I hope it translates into production. Um, these guys are lean, fit, trim. They're looking great. They look fleet of foot. They look healthy. They look. They actually look happy. Um, you know, every time I, I, you know, I'm looking at Pick Me on Instagram, always taking care of his body. I'm looking at Shaq. I'm looking at Lorenzo Lingard stepping up the the rehab and stepping up the the, the field work. And outside of that, you see guys posting their meals, their diets. Um, and when I saw those guys at Paradise Camp. When I saw KJ Osborne rip the shreds, because he had some baby fat now in the spring now, let's keep it one thou out. When mm-hmm. I saw DJ Dallas, who who had a whole lot of baby fat in the spring, when I just saw him and I'm like, bro, he just lost a lot of weight. You know what I'm saying? At the same time, I'm looking at Nesta, and Nesta, Nesta, no longer has a, a big old gut. And I'm like, what's going on here? Oh, so Nest, Ron- Nestor didn't lost Nestor didn't lost his gut. I'm not joking, bro. Listen to me. I said lost his gut. Now, now he's still a big guy, but remember he had that gut. See, he was a baby Gerald Willis hanging out the hanging out the bottom of the jersey. You know. So, but right now, man, he had a T-shirt on, and that T-shirt went straight down in the front. And I was like, whoa, what's going on here? You know, and his arms look bigger. And I and I was talking to I talked to KJ. I say, how you feeling? You know, are you looking good? How you feeling? Feeling great? Um, you know, every I can't complain. Um, the uh, the workouts, the you know, the routine, everything is working. And I talked to Romeo Finley. Romeo Finley, I, I thought he. He lost weight, and I just wanted to confirm it with him. I said, Romeo, look like you, you, you're trimming down. You lost the weight. He's like, no, I actually gained weight. I gained muscle and lost fat. And I'm like, wow. So I asked him straight up. I said, how do you like the um the Phoenix routine? You know, Philly got you guys, you know, looking great. He was like, I know you heard about it, right? And I'm like, uh, no, he said, what are people, he said, I, you heard what people are saying about it, right? I said, well, I see it. You know, I see it with my own eyes. You know, and he kind of laughed and, and walked off. And even Shaq, Shaq showed off a little six pack the other day. I'm like, you know, these guys, they look, they look different, and and you can see it on a lot of pictures. Lingard, you can see uh, Blades, even Blades starting to put on a little bit of weight. Um, uh, DJ Ivy, DJ Ivy, man, he looks like a grown man. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, uh, you know, so these guys are, are really, really buying in to just being the best and competing in the weight room. Because, you know, the, you, you see some of the Instagram and tweets about the weight room competitions they got there. So we just hope to see it translate. And, you know, Lord willing, these guys stay healthy so they can show what this what this program, what Philly's program is doing to, with these guys. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Good, man. Good. And, and that's good to hear that, man. And, and like I said, we've all seen the pictures. The players seem uh, – we I, we saw the video of Lingard looking like a beast. We're ready to get him uh, back on the field. Um, so, I mean, I think we pretty much touched based on the, the Paradise Camp. By this time, you've already heard everything – that we've all heard, you know, uh, Eli uh, Roberts, Chris Washington, uh, a couple two, uh, 2021 guys have committed. It went great. Um, and and uh, and I'm excited, man. It, it, what is um, – give me one lasting impression that – how did you feel when you left the camp? When you walked out the door, how did you feel? Um, 
Um, I actually didn't want to leave. You didn't want to leave. The energy was that great. The energy was great. Everybody, it wasn't no public publicity appearances. Everyone stayed. Parents talking to coaches. Parents talking to um, um, Alonzo Highsmith, you know, with the Cleveland Browns now. And he's telling them, giving those parents advice, you know, to give those kids the best opportunity to not only succeed in high school but college and, and, and possibly make it to the pros. And, and, and you got current players sticking around, you know, talking to, I mean, former players talking to current players. And they laughing and smiling. And you're looking at that that thing we remember when we used to watch the youth documentary, how the older guys would come back and give back to the new guys and, and, and everything. It's that feeling, man. It's really a family-type feeling right now. And I think if you're not on board, then you just, like, I, like Manny say, man, you want if you want to win championships, come to Miami. Mm. You know, like, you want to get your ass kicked, go wherever you need to go. So I, I think these guys are, are – it's a good vibe, man. That's all I'm going to tell you. I'm going to leave it at that. It's a great – I ain't want to leave. Good deal, good deal, man, and um, and I'm excited. What's up? That's all I'm gonna say. August twenty fourth, man. August twenty fourth. I'm excited, man. I think. Um, let's see, who was the last guy we got? Was Corey Flag? Um, I want us to see. I want to see us get a couple, um, more linebackers in the couple. You know, I would like. You know, I would like to see us close a big time. Um, commit. You know, I know Jalen Rivers was was big. I would like to see us close a Isaiah Walker or Justin Flo. Um, you know, night and you know, I want to see us close one of those guys. But I think the coaching staff has been doing great. Let's talk about um a player, Mark Pope. All right. And um, uh, you know, the the article came out that essentially said. You know, he couldn't get he didn't get the playbook down last year. Right. What are your what are your thoughts on that? Um I'll tell you how I took it and um you you tell me how you took it when you read that and I'll tell you what I thought about it. Well, what I would say is this that playbook was so vanilla that I don't know what kind of why thirty two Spider Banana, they thought they were gonna run, but um, that playbook was so good. I think that's maybe a uh, covering for something else. So I did hear he had personal issues, okay. and I think they maybe were just trying to, you know, cover for him for something. I don't know what, but I don't think it was that, man. I don't think it was that because, you know, if if you got talent and you playing wide receiver and you're a five star, which Mark Pope was actually a five star. Um, they gonna get you the ball. So not having a playbook down isn't a good enough reason to say we ain't getting you the ball. We ain't get, getting you touches that you need to get. You know, I do think I did hear that there was a lot of favoritism um, in the Rick era. Um, you know, when you talk about um, certain guys that that I guess went along with cold, with the cold and went against the grain. So I did hear about that last season. But outside of that, I don't buy it. I don't buy that he didn't know the playbook or he, he didn't get the playbook down. I, I, I don't buy that. Okay. Okay. See, I didn't I – I, I think it's deeper than that. Okay. So you think he was just saying that because he didn't want to speak on something else? I think that's the reason he didn't want to speak on something else. And I think he, he, he cleaned it up and, you know, gave a nice PC um, thing to just protect himself and protect the program, you know? Right. You don't right. want to turn guys away by saying certain things. And I think this – I do believe that this regime, because Eno's like Pope. I don't know if y'all know that. Eno's made sure Pope was getting touched. Eno made sure he got him touched his face. In um, all the spring games and spring practices, so Eno knows what he has with Pope. So it ain't with it ain't with Eno's right now. It, it's what it is. Is maybe he, like I said, he was going through some some issues, and I think 
he going to have a bounce back. And everybody's been predicting it, saying Pope going to have a bounce back year this year. And I believe he will because once the ball's in his hands, and one thing we didn't take advantage of last season was getting the ball in the hands of our playmakers in space. That's one thing we didn't do. And I think Enos knows damn well I got some 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 speed guards out here and, and some some really some really good playmakers. I'm gonna get the ball in their hands in space, and we're gonna see the the Pope we're supposed to see. Okay, okay, and okay. So so let me say, let's say, and I agree. I, I, um, I think Pope can have Pope can have a good season if you look at his spring. We we know he's a five star. We we can look at the film and tell you he's he's great. But when um, let's say he let me let me just say it. Let's say he's telling the truth. Mm-hmm. One let's say if this is just completely if he's telling the truth because only he knows what happened. But if he's mm-hmm. telling the truth, one I like him owning up to it. Right. Two. We've seen and we know five stars can come in cocky. They they can come in and think, hey, I can make it off my athletic ability. I'm in Miami. You know, mm-hmm. it's a lot of distractions in Miami. Mm-hmm. That's one hundred percent. Uh a lot. a lot of distraction. So in end, I also thought about Amar Richards. I've I've heard Amar Richards talk about um, the offense on several different interviews, and the thing he says is the playbook was big. They had a lot of plays. They practiced a lot of plays. They just mm-hmm. didn't run the plays. Right. So I I mean I do think. Um, that's um uh, I think if, if he's telling the truth, if it was the um the playbook, I think I like that he took responsibility for it. And I think I mean we've all said he's gonna have a, a comeback season. I think that's that's somebody saying, Hey, I messed up, it won't happen again, and I'm ready to go. Mm-hmm. So I agree. And I, I agree with you. I think uh if that's the case, I, I do think that's a good thing that shows character with him. And um, like I said, I do think because you've seen better tweets from him, you start seeing him, you know, with a different attitude a little bit here and there. So I do think that he, uh, um, whatever it was, it's in the past, and I think he's going to attack this season with um, with the right attitude. And I think he got a lot, a, a lot to prove, man. I think he got a lot to prove, and I think he gonna show. He gonna, show. we gonna, see, we gonna, we gonna have some, um, some Mark Pope highlights, man. Okay. I believe that. Okay, okay. So, um, you got, you got time to do a quick Q and A? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Okay, okay. Somebody said we know, um, um, this question gets asked all the time. Who do you think is gonna be the starting quarterback? I test, um, and I'm on, I can only go off of the spring seeing all three quarterbacks together, and I'm only going to include three, obviously. Um, and there were five quarterbacks out there throwing the ball around. Um, just I test alone, I still think you got to go with Nikosi Perry. Um, just pure I test. Um, Jaron has a maybe has the best control with his arm. But I think Perry gives you more passing options. He can throw it every, any and everywhere. You know, Jaron doesn't have a missile. Nikosi can give you that deep post, that deep sideline, things that we missed on the last couple of years. And why wouldn't you want those, um, want to be able to get those, those routes down? Those, those are the routes, the home run hit that we would need it's it's it now also with um he's gotten a lot better with his you know medium to low passes you know and i've seen him working i've seen him working since break and he's still working so the the jury's still out but from eye test alone i gotta go with nikosi um tate will give you that dynamic of running but 
one thing I, I just want to make this clear. Um, that's not always the best thing to have. Now, if you can throw it all over the field and have the running, okay. But you got to show me a little bit more with your arm before I can say he's the guy. I got to see a little more with his arm. He had that one nice pass to KJ, um, to be honest. You know, he had a couple, a few nice passes at the spring game in Orlando. So, um, but I got to see more because that was the only time he really shined. Just that one spring game. Right. And I'm talking this and all. So, um, you know, maybe he shows up when the lights are bright. Who knows? And that's, hey, ain't nothing wrong with that. But from the eye test, I got to go to coaching right now. Okay. Okay. So you. So would you. So what. What would your depth chart be for quarterback? Yeah. Um. I would go Nikosi one. Okay. I would go Tate Martell two, and I would go Jaron Williams three. And there's a reason I'm doing that. I think I've seen the ceiling for Jaron Williams. I've seen all I can see. That's just my opinion. Mm-hmm. He's gotten reps with the ones. He's gotten reps with the scrubs. Not gross, but you know what I mean. And I think I've seen the the ceiling. Tate has had some bad days, but you see flashes of some great stuff. So I think we haven't seen anything close to his ceiling yet. So I think, like I said, he might be one of those guys that show up when the lights are bright, which I ain't mad at it, you know. Um, So just based on... His dynamic of running and, and the potential I see with this, with, with him being a, a dual threat, a true dual threat, um, I gotta put him second because he can get us out of a few a few problems, you know, uh, with his feet. Jaron, on the other hand, I saw him take a lot of sacks. He's um, more of he reminds me of the game managing quarterback, and that's just my opinion. I actually like the guy, but that's just my opinion. He feels like a game manager. He, he's not going to force the ball. He'll eat sacks. He's done it. Um, he'll, you know, he's not going to force it. He want to make sure he throws it to the right person. And um, I, I think, you know, he's very um, more cer- more cerebral than he is athletic, you know, as a quarterback. Okay. So okay. I, I just think I've seen all we can see from Jaron. That's just my opinion. I do think Tate offers a little more based on the potential of his arm and his legs. Okay, okay, and I think um, I think uh, I, in, I think Tate's gonna be the starter, but I, I but I think it it would not surprise if Nikosi's the starter. I'm not gonna be like shocked if Jaron Williams is the starter. That would be I would be shocked. Uh, right. Um, asking about people are asking the wholesome one, the UJ, uh, J, the U family blaze. They're asking about the second corner position. Um, who you got at the second corner position and why? Uh, assuming you got Bandy at one. Yeah. Bandy and Ivy will be the starting corner. Obviously. I don't care about Bandy moving into slide because of his size. No. Bandy's a dog. You want your guy on, you know. Well, maybe, he, he, he can play both, though. Yeah, he can play both. I mean, you know, situation will dictate. But I like I like Blaze because I think Blaze might be a better student of the game. And I think he may actually, I think Blaze may actually capitalize coming in as a nickel or coming in to, to coming in as a, you know, a backup to um, Bandy or, Ivy, you know, with those guys need a break. I think he, he's got his head in the playbook. He's got his head in the game. I think he's a student of the game. I, I love how hearing him talk. And I think he's one of those sneaky guys. I'm talking about when I'm talking about upstairs in his, in his head. He might be one of those Ed Reed type guys. I know I'm, I, I, I don't want people to go crazy on me. What I mean as far as knowing his knowledge, he picking up on this stuff so, so quick. And I think he's one of those guys that can sneak a couple interceptions, sneak a couple, you know, strip balls. He's one of those type guys. And, and, and he was a captain for a reason. The guys gravitate to him. He's a true leader. You know, he was a captain on special teams, but he actually was a true leader. 
And um, I think that's going to benefit him wherever he plays. But I think DJ Ivy and Trajan Bandy will be um, Bandy Ivy, one, two. Bandy um, Ivy, uh, one, two. And then you think Blaze can survive at that nickel position? Blaze will thrive at the nickel. He I will. think Blaze will thrive at the nickel and obviously backing up Bandy or Ivy. Okay. Okay. I don't see nobody. I don't see a third option um, coming in before Blade. That won't happen. Okay. Okay. Um, who Who do you think? This is This is my question. Who do you think is gonna have a big, uh, bigger impact next year? Christian Williams or to Corey Couch? We're talking about next season. Talking about next season. Or this upcoming season. Like this upcoming season, like in a couple months. I think Nigel Bethel will have a better impact before those guys. Oh, okay, okay. Don't overlook because, Nigel. No, not at all. Listen to me. Do not overlook Nigel. Do not overlook Nigel at corner. Do not overlook Nigel at um, kick return and punt return. Nigel what? is an ass. He's everywhere. He's quick and fast. Don't get it twisted, y'all. So you don't think you do, do you do you see any of our young DBs making the? I mean, let's say everybody stays healthy. You think we're going to stick with the uh, uh, Nigel over the Young Bucks? If everybody stays healthy, I think what we're going to we're, we're going to see is certain packages that Blake Baker might throw in for certain teams where you just get those guys a, a, a few t- a few plays, kind of like we did with with, with Bandy. Um, you know, we, we gave him a lot in 2017. You know, he got to see the field a lot here and there. You know what I'm saying? Um, obviously because, you know, we couldn't trust um, Dean and we couldn't trust D. Delaney. Um, so I think uh, Andy is the guy, well, you know, he showed that he can get some PT. I think those other guys, I think Christian Williams and uh, Scory Couch, not being around for the spring, not being around for the summer, um, for the summer, um, for the summer um, conditioning and stuff like that, I think that's gonna just they're just gonna have to kind of be brought along a little bit, and you know, come mid mid season, I think they'll start you know seeing a feel here and there in spots. You know, that's how I think that's how Rump likes to do it. Bring them in in spots just to give them you know get their little feet wet here and there. You know, don't don't throw them to the wolves. You know, get get them in there on a little press or get them maybe some garbage time. And then, you know, stuff like that. Okay. Okay. And uh, so you kind of touched on it when you said Nigel can, can return punts or whatever, but I think that's something a lot of people aren't talking about is who's going to be our kick and punt returners this year? And, um, and tell me really why. Tell me why. Because we got a lot of capable candidates. I would rather have a full-time kick returner slash punt returner. Unfortunately, we ran with Jeff Thomas and DJ last year a lot, and you know, you know that would buy a guy one to two plays of that series. Unfortunately, you know what I'm saying. It, depending on the return, obviously, depending on the return, I would rather have a full-time kick return punt return guy, kind of like we did with Hester. And a, and like you know Benjamin and stuff like that, um, a, a, a guy that we know that, that nine times out of ten they're a home run hitter and, and they could just be back there. And obviously, um, Bethel being an option, maybe like a fourth corner, I think he would be the guy that I would look at. Listen, no Jeff, Jeff Thomas, Jeff no Thomas DJ Dallas. Listen to me, Jeff Thomas with the ball in his hand. Is that Jeff Thomas can be the full time kick and punt returner? Mark I Pope. Want that. Mark Pope is dynamic, but I don't. I wouldn't listen. Pope showed me a lot, but I wouldn't put Pope above Nigel Bethel in the kick return game. Really? I'm, I'm not kidding, bro. Okay, okay. Are we basing this off of Nigel Bethel's kickoff return, or just just because he has that pure speed? Off of both, I watched him shred those guys, straight line, no wiggle, just be and go. And 
Ain't no nobody touched her. Untouched. Multiple times, not once. Like three times. And it wasn't no uh half speed, it wasn't no half speed drill, it wasn't none of that. They had to tackle them. So I'm just going off of, you know, pure I wouldn't want Lingard doing it. I know he's capable. Like I say, our our full time offensive players, um, I wouldn't want them doing it. I would rather have a full time returner. And then kick off, yeah, we could have two guys. We could have Pope and Bethel back there if you want. I love Jeff Thomas. He's the most he's one of the most dynamic returners ever to me. I would rather Jeff Thomas than um DJ Dallas at kick return because I I, I I like DJ, but he's a little too extra shifty for me. He does a little too many moves for me. You know what I'm saying? Jeff Thomas, he'll find a lane and it's go time. Nigel Bethel, he'll find any lane, big or small, and it's go time. He's like a gazelle running down the field. Okay, and it's, and a lot of people are saying they don't want uh, Jeff Thomas or DJ because they want to save them for offense. But I mean, if if it may that may change a game having Jeff Thomas there, right? And 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 at the same time, you know, it sucks because we got so many talented guys, and Jeff Thomas is that one guy that I, I if I had to if I had to put my, my my life savings on and say pick one guy fourth quarter against Florida State, we need field position. Who you got? I got Jeff Thomas. But I think, I just think, if we get a guy that we, that that's maybe a natural returner, kind of like Jeff Thomas, that can just do that full time. Ain't got to worry about nothing. He know it's his time. You know he going to be hungry because that might be his only time to really get the ball in his hands and, and get score. A la Devin Hester. Because Devin Hester was like, bro, they partner? Okay, let's do this. Mm. I need one to do I need one today, at least one. At least. At the time it was third and something. He he he's he's dropping up. Third and one. He's still striping <laughs> up. Devin, they they might get the first man, look, I need one today. So we we I, I would rather have that than have because I don't see nobody. I'm sorry. I like KJ. I like I like a lot of other guys. Jeff Thomas will be on that field. I think he will be on that field full time. Unless he, unless he gippy or too tired and to get off that field. You know what I was thinking? How how crazy would it be if they did put Jeff Thomas back there against Florida in the first play? He took it to the house like, um, like in the past, like Devin Hester did it to Florida. Would that would that not bring down the whole stadium? You might have to go live right there. (laughs) Just hit the live button. Would that, I, would, would, that not, would that not bring down the stadium if that happened? Bruh, that would bring down the stadium. I'm t- bruh, we the first game of the season. Not, not the first Saturday of football. No, we the first game of the, in the nation. Everybody watching August 24th. Let's do that. Let's do it. Go ahead and let Jeff Thomas run it back. Bro, we here. I can hear her, Kirk Herb Street and all those guys on the phone. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> that new Miami that we hearing about, you already know, man. You uh, give me hype, you know. Hey, you already give me hype, bro. Don't, don't start that, man. Uh, what What's your thoughts on Asa Martin transferring today? Um, I agree with you. I think it was uh, I think it was a smart move by him. Yeah. You know, he's coming off of a little bit of injury. He's going to need a little rehab. He's not playing this year. Um, we don't know where he is um, health wise, and we don't. You know, I, I think he needs a he needs a program where it's clear cut that he's got an opportunity to see the field. Um, you know, it don't matter where it's at. He just needs to know that he's he's got an opportunity. I think we're so loaded right now. You know, we're still going to have guys coming in that we're looking at. And I think we're loaded with, with, with home run hitters. So, I mean, I can't see him – I can't see him sniffing the field over DJ, Lorenzo, 
uh, not even Cam and probably not Cheney, even if, you know, even if it's next season. You know what I'm saying? Right. Probably since I saw Cheney in person and, you know, he, 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 he lives up to the hype. So I think, you know, I think it's a smart move by the kid. You know, you, you still want to keep that eligibility and, and, and find a place where, you know, you may have a little competition, but it ain't this deep. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think, like I said, I think when he got here, he didn't realize the competition we had at running back, honestly. You know, I, like I think, I think, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, like like I said uh, in my video, you know, unless you really paid attention to Miami Hurricanes football, which you probably did towards the end of the year, um, you you know, they the mainstream media didn't know who Cam Davis was, who's now Cam Harris. So he probably just saw, okay, they got DJ Dallas, Travis Homer gone. That's a nice slot for me. Mm-hmm. And another thing about what you were talking about with the with the uh, um, transfer portal, you're starting to see that trend of guys, you know, transferring and then transferring back out of program. And um, I think it's just that, you know, they're not realizing – uh, how stiff the competition is, or how deep a team is, and maybe they, it is just uh, too uphill. You know, maybe guys got better relationships with those coaches than you, and you're gonna be like, you know, feeling like the odd man in, odd man out, or whatnot. So, um, I think he's doing a good thing for himself, and, and I really hope he finds his place. I would love to see him. I want to see him on the field. Right. So I hope Agreed. he's in school, and I, I'm really looking for it. I want to see him. See what he got, cause you know any guy that wants to come down here and we take him, you know I want to I want to know what they got. And, and he, you know he he even said you know hey Miami did number show me love I thought that was pretty cool of him to give us a shout out you know I mean hey do your thing my man we wish you the best of luck. Um, is DJ Dallas going pro after this year? What what do you think about that? Um. I want to say it depends on how the year turns out, but I think I think I think this is his year to really like put his foot in the ground because he don't got no more time after this season. After this season, man, I mean, barring you know, knock on wood, barring any other injury, um, it's gonna be his. his that's his, his. That's his room. The running back room is his. You know, and he, you know, he got to bring those guys up under him. They're gonna follow his lead, and I think this is his year to shine. Um, I think this might be his last year. Hopefully, it's not. <laughs> right, right. We can, we can use him for another year. Uh, to be honest, um, barring twelve hundred yards, I don't even think a thousand yards. I would feel good about him leaving. I think you know if he can if he can pull off, um, you know eleven twelve hundred. I, I would be okay to see him test the waters with the draft. Um, I would be okay, you know, for him for that. But, you know, barring that, and I do believe we, and I did tell you this, I do believe we will have more than one thousand yard back this year. We're going to rush for more than 2,000 yards. Okay. Okay. And, and I, I agree. I agree. I think when people say, like somebody just said, DJ needs to stay, Similar to, to what you just said, you said he said DJ needs to stay. Well, if he stays, he got some young bulls back there. Yeah, yeah. We, we only can keep him contained for so long. Right, right, right. And, and we don't want to lose any of those young bulls to the transfer portal at all. We can't afford that. All right, my man, I'm going to ask you this last question. Um, uh, Anthony, as always, brother, I always appreciate you, uh, you know, giving me this time and, you know, giving the people in the chat this time, you know, cause people always ask me, I don't know if you ever read my comments, but people are like, when Anthony coming back on, when Anthony coming back on and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give him back on man. So I, I just want to say, uh, I really appreciate it, brother. Uh, oh, no problem, man. I'm going to tell you, um, you know, like I said, I will be around, um, um, you know, uh, fall practices and everything. Okay. So, uh, 
So we, we gonna, we're going to have a lot more to discuss, and we're going to really see um, what type of product we will be putting on the field, and I'll be keeping you guys posted on that. Okay, okay. And uh, w- one more question. From a game plan point of view, from, from your perspective, what's the game pa- plan to beat Florida? Um, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to keep it simple. This is the easiest game plan in the history of football. Um, the easiest game plan in football. Yep. Yep. What you want to do, you want to keep eight out of the box. You want to keep eight out of the box. So you're going to throw to run. You're going to throw to run. So what we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to stretch the field with our tight ends. And we're going to use the, the sidelines in the third um, for, with, with our receivers, maybe some underneath crossing and drag, you know, keep those safeties um, on a swivel and keep those linebackers honest. Only thing I'm, only, the only thing I see that Florida brings to the table is um, decent uh, cornerback play. You know, corner, they, they got good cornerback play. But I think if we spread that field like I know we will, and I think if we do our double type formation, which I've seen all spring, and they running it like clockwork, with Brevin on one side and Mallory on the other side, I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. Ain't no linebacker in America. There is no Sam in America gonna be able to deal with um, Brevin or Will Mallory. Ain't no safety in America going to be able to deal with them without without them having to come up and be honest and getting blown the top blown off by our speedsters outside. We got to throw the we got to throw to run. So attack the cor- attack the corners to keep them back. Attack the corners to keep don't not throw it to them, throw it. Attack them to keep them back. You know what I'm saying? And and once once they once they start reacting to our passing um, and then we're going to hit him with the run. So that's what I would say. I would say a title. Now, uh, defensive scheme-wise, we're just going to do what many do. We're going to get after that quarterback. Oh, yeah. Period. Oh, yeah. Period. Oh, yeah. Listen, I didn't even mention to you. I mentioned to you when we talked before, but a lot of people don't even, haven't even seen Javari Harvey. But remember, we talked about being too deep at the end. Bro, we might be, man. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> bro. That boy that I put on, he look like Garvin right now. He look like Garvin right now. No, I'm sorry. He look like Russo right now. They done made strides, man, in the weight room and in, in, in conditioning. And I can't wait to see what these boys are going to do. And I think that defensive front, remember, remember now, let's not renege. Remember what I said. The defensive stats we put up, turnover chain and all, in 2017, we blowing that out the water in 2019. Season. I told you it's, it's going to be hard to blow that out the water. We were top five in almost every category. We're going to blow it out the water with the loss of Red Wine, with the loss of Jaquan Johnson, with the loss of Michael Jackson, with the loss of Garvin. You know what I'm saying? We're going to blow that out the water. Out the water. Statistically, we, we, we're going to have – one of the top – right now, I'm going to just be modest and say top five defenses in the nation. Just being modest. Just being modest. In the ACC, we got the best defense, period. Mm. The nation, top five. I'm just just being modest. Okay. Hey we, the- hey, we got receipts now. We got receipts. Yeah, we got receipts, man. It, Don't let that 76 fool you. I keep telling people. Don't it will, let that 76 fool you, bro. It will definitely, will definitely, um, will definitely, um, you know, I'll definitely ask this question again, man. But I appreciate it. I appreciate it, brother. I appreciate it. All right, for sure, man, man. All right, my man. I'm going to leave the chat. Um, I'm going to leave the chat going, but. I'm going to go off here, you know, got to go take care of my dogs and do great things. I want to thank everybody for coming out for Miami Mondays. Uh, Anthony, I appreciate it, brother. 
Hey, no problem, man. Um, you know, anytime. So we'll be in touch. All right, brother. All right, little. All right, guys. Hey, I appreciate you uh, tuning in, guys. Uh, I'm going to leave the chat going for a little bit. If y'all want to talk, I'll be in and out of the chat. I'm going to let it run, play some music, let it run for a little bit, but I appreciate it. I do want to let you know, for those who don't know, my name is Grant Long. I love the Canes. I run NMD TV. My goal is to be a full-time content creator so I can seriously do this 24-7. If you want to help me accomplish that goal, just click that Patreon link. Get signed up with the Patreon page, and then you can have access to uh, early videos, exclusive videos, requests on breakdowns. Also, the podcast just dropped. So, hey, appreciate everybody who liked the video, who commented, the wholesome one. Shout out to the wholesome one, and definitely shout out to my boy, Anthony. I appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot. Let's see if I can find some tunes. Hey, much love to the peoples.